Hello, this is C. Marshall, and this is my review of the Talos Principle. This game was developed by Crow Team of Serious Sam fame, and is currently selling on Steam for $39.99. The Talos Principle arrived like a childbirth on the day the war ended. A wonderful surprise that was overshadowed by the blazing trumpets of shooter season. And I really couldn't see it any other way, because this is the type of game that has largely gone extinct. A first-person adventure puzzle game driven by philosophical themes. So, it showing up out of nowhere with absolutely no fanfare was kinda perfect. Crow Team had been doing nothing but making Serious Sam for over a decade before the Talos Principle came out, and it gleams of freedom. A company who finally saw a chance to branch into new territory and just fucking ran with it. This isn't testing the waters, this is a bold, strange, and contextually massive game. It not only morphs into one of the most gratifying puzzle games in recent memory, it also asks some fascinating questions. The game is often compared to Portal, which would be silly, but this type of game is so rare these days that it sticks quite well. But in my mind, I keep settling on this thought. If Portal is a Tarantino film, then Talos is definitely a David Fincher. Portal's dark, whimsical humor and style are met by Talos Principle's grounded, neutral, philosophical tones and art direction. This art direction is far from distinctive. You can certainly tell it was made by the Serious Sam developers with its tall, empty corridors and, and dilapidated structures inspired by ancient architecture. But at first glance, it would be pretty hard to pick out of a lineup. And the environments just don't feel right. They are gorgeous, and at higher settings they're almost lifelike, but it just seems like a strange choice. Even though some of the architecture fits with the theme, the textures are far too realistic for the relatively simple geometry to which they're applied. And this gives the eye a hard time when trying to solve complicated puzzles, or find new equipment hiding in the brush. It also makes the game's puzzles blend together, only identifying themselves with clever level design. The puzzles are built around the collection of tetraminos. Here, they're called sigils, which are the keys to progression in the game. The progression is open and you're always allowed to skip a few puzzles if you find them too challenging, but sometimes you're gated by a yet unlocked piece of equipment. Everything is unlocked by a little mini-game involving your accrued sigils, a game that is a fun diversion and is so much more satisfying than just inserting a key that you found on some dead guy's body. The puzzles are never extremely difficult, but they reach this level of consistent but manageable difficulty that makes you pat yourself on the back for completing them and this feeling that you did this alone with your own mind and decisions. The game never feels like it's handing you an easy victory. Only a few made me feel like I was actually going to pull my hair out, and they were often the ones with the simplest solutions. If I couldn't solve one, I would gather all of my given items in the starting area and try to work my way back through. But because the environments can kind of swallow the items, it made me constantly feel feel like I was missing one of them. Quite a few times this leads to you creatively opening doors for yourself or trying to squeeze as much use out of a few pieces of equipment, thinking that you surely have missed one stuck in a corner somewhere. The puzzles are mostly centered around opening doors and maximizing the use of what you're given, but the constant game of solo leapfrog can be repetitive. Thankfully, the game loves to throw wild twists at its simple problems. The way the levels are constructed is a real standout. Every single puzzle has these wonderful visual clues as to where you're supposed to be headed and working for. And because each one is its own bite-sized area, they never feel overwhelming. The gates that hold you back are semi-transparent, ever teasing you with what's behind them. I love how you can frequently see the sigils you're supposed to collect from the first area you walk into. It'll make you instantly solve the puzzle in your head, only to reach the final gate with nothing left, forcing you to retrace your steps and develop a more consolidated system. The game is built upon uncompromising rules, but sometimes it asks you to break these rules, which can lead to elation or bewilderment. The star challenges are by far the most intriguing example of this. They don't hide most of them, they throw them right in front of your face, just out of reach and you are asked to go against everything you've learned in the game to acquire them. Sometimes this means sneaking tools out of puzzles or finding hidden pathways. They generally require outside-of-the-box thinking. Crow Team really treats you like an adult here, and it's quite nice when things begin to click without much assistance. But assistance is there if you work for it. You can summon other androids to help you, but getting them is a challenge in itself, and it's something you can't access until a few hours in. This all blends with the narrative quite smoothly, a group of isolated souls trying to answer big questions together. The narrative is fascinating, but feels like a completely separate beast. Like a double album where the lead singer left halfway through. As the various devices are introduced, there is an almost unparalleled game flow achieved. The story starts to feel like an interruption. You're riding this wave of confidence, plowing through puzzles and digesting all these new mechanics, then you have to grind to a screeching halt to a text-based discussion with a computer. And this is how most of the story is told. 
pretty much all of this is optional, but you'd be missing out on some pretty cool stuff if you didn't subject yourself to it. The conversations with the computer terminal are excellently written, and these conversations are a highlight even if I don't agree with their delivery. Starting off as a robotic series of commands and responses, then slowly evolving into patronizing philosophical debates, at times even feeling like you're speaking to a human on the other end. I would often make a choice, see the computer's response, and then find myself agreeing with his conclusions more than my own. The discussions ask big questions, and you're never given any sort of resolve. The largest question here is what constitutes being a human, among other branching thoughts. And of course, Crow Team didn't set out to answer these things. But it does present old existential standby questions in a fresh way. And it applies so well to single-player gaming. This feeling that you are completely alone, an automaton locked in some ever-narrowing corridor with only NPCs to serve as companions. In the Talos Principle, you are struggling against challenges you have imposed on yourself. And as you pound your way through the game, a confidence is crafted. One that makes you feel less alone as you begin to decipher the game's narrative complexities. Knowing that you are completing the game with thousands of other players, all voicelessly communicating through messages on the internet and such. The end of the game is when you decide to end it. You can complete it in a sense, knowing that you have done your part to solve the puzzle as a whole. But even if you decide to quit halfway through and never play again, it is the end of your narrative. A clever move on the developer's part, similar to Bioshock Infinite's meta-commentary on video gaming. And this here makes you look at yourself and say, there doesn't have to be a point, because I'm human, and this is where I want to be. I've played my part. What a pleasant surprise it all is. A game that knows it's a game and asks some really big questions about why we do the things we do. It has a brutally hands-off approach to game design and narrative forcing you to sit back and appreciate your accomplishments on your own terms. I really can't recommend it enough. Thank you for listening, or watching, or both.